Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Verizon's 5G ultra wideband connection, gigabit style. So normally I don't do these types of things uh, and normally I'm not in other places than my home. But uh, as you can see, I'm not sure if that flashlight will help at all, but right about there, right above the middle of my phone, there is a street pole with a 5G node on it. Now, if you look over there, there's also nodes. And over there. And over somewhere over there. And over there. And over there. So yeah, the place is absolutely covered in 5G ultra wideband here in Dewey Beach. Now, one of the best parts about having 5G ultra wideband is just that smile on your face when you see that quick, fast, two gigabit speed. Now, the, my 5G antenna is right about here, so I usually hold it and point it towards the tower. And as you can see here, we're averaging about 20 to 21, 2200 megabits here on our download part. And our upload's gonna get us about 200, I'd say 240, 230, 240. Yeah, 232. So 5G ultra wideband. This is something I've been messing with for quite a while now. I originally started in Charlotte, North Carolina when I uh, first got this Verizon plan and I got 5G ultra wideband access and I decided to try out Verizon's ultra wideband network and after I did that, I was shocked by the four gigabit speeds. The performance was amazing, but the reliability was not. I was only able to find it in one part of the city, which was really, really upsetting, and there was really only one 5G node, and I had to be very, very close to it. Um, the, the disadvantage with, you know, things like 5G ultra wideband is, unfortunately, I mean, the speed is great, the performance is great, but anything will block the signal. A car window, a car door, your finger, I mean, anything can block the signal and prevent you from getting it. Um, that is the only part that sucks. And even this clear MagSafe case that I have on, watch the difference. So you saw I got 2,207 on download. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be talking a little bit about Verizon's 5G Ultra Wideband. If you look around here, we have 5G just about everywhere. You can barely see it there. I'll get some more shots with my drone tomorrow in the daylight. But there is just 5G nodes everywhere. And if you look here, Look at the speeds we can get from that node over there. Pretty fast, right? That's what I thought too. So, we are testing from Dewey Beach in Delaware. Now, this is one of the very many hotels that they have, and I know this isn't the best conditions to record in, but uh, the thing about 5G ultra wideband is it's, it's a great thing to have, except the only issue is that it typically loses service if you walk away from the, the station. Well, sorry, the node. Now the node is over there, but you can also see that there's some placed over here. So walking throughout um, Dewey Beach, you have 5G ultra wideband almost the entire time walking and driving down the street, which is probably my favorite part about this. Now as you can see, 2,131 megabits, a ping of 16 milliseconds, a jitter of 9.3 milliseconds, a loss of pretty much nothing, and an upload speed of 248 megabits is pretty darn good. Now I've been using this all day. Now 5G Ultra Wideband has a lot of pros and cons to it, so some of the things that kind of suck is battery life. <laughs> um, this actually made my battery go to 91% health from 92 just doing this all day so you know it's pretty taxing on your battery but um, it's pretty fun to play with and 
it, it's just, it's great to have overall. So when I went to Charlotte, North Carolina, I tested out this technology and uh, this was brand new to me at the time and I got around 4,000, almost 4,000 megabits on download and uh, 100 something upload and it was probably one of the greatest technology experiences I've had in my life. But um, this one is even better because I was only able to get it in one place when I was in Charlotte and if I moved, uh, if, I put my, if I covered my finger in front of the antenna, it would lose its signal and it would just draw it out. But as you can see, I could put my entire hand there and it just does not lose it. Now, if I do take my case off, uh, I can get some better results with that 5G ultra wideband. Um, an important thing to note is that even a simple car window or a car windshield uh, in general, just that thin piece of glass, um, it, it will block that 5G signal. Uh, that signal is very, very thin and it's very, very hard to come by, especially in a car which kind of shocks me that I was able to get it through the window here, but I was only able to get it because I had the window down. Now, some things to note that, like when you're about to receive this 5G ultra wideband signal, uh, sometimes you'll have full LTE or you'll have full 5G and it'll be insanely, ridiculously fast. For example, if you're getting over 200 megabits on LTE, roll your windows down because this is coming to you. So. One of my favorite things about this is not only the speed, but the logo. The logo is just satisfying by itself. And uh, another cool thing about here in Dewey Beach is that since the nodes are so close, they actually work through buildings. So um, I should be showing a video about now that has me taking a video of me doing a speed test while inside of our hotel room and still getting gigabit speeds. Uh, this entire street actually is getting gigabit speeds all the way from there, all the way down. So, 5G ultra wideband is just an awesome thing to have, but it's also a dangerous thing. A, battery. B, your carrier will start to hate you after you start using about 192 gigabytes a day. And uh, yeah, now one of the questions that you may or may not have is, okay, so I have this extremely fast connection on my phone. Now what happens if I pair it up to my brand new MacBook Air M1 chip? Will I get the full speed? The quick answer is no, not necessarily. But I bet there is a way to get much quicker speeds on it with much better, you know, uh, I just kind of set it up and did a speed test. But I'm sure if you do a couple of more things that there is a much better, much, much better way to get a little bit of a higher speed. But I don't think that your phone's gonna be pushing out any more than 450 to 500 megabits per second due to the fact that, I mean, that cellular modem just isn't built to push out that far of speed, you know? I mean, it's made for that cellular modem to take it into the phone, but it's it's not always just made to take it into the phone and then push it out again. So, your hotspot speeds are not going to be as quick, but with 5G ultra wideband, your upload speed is usually pretty high. Uh, as you see, I was getting about 200 something, so that will transfer over to your computer uh, as long g ultra wideband is a great feature to have on, on your carrier um, your device's plan and a great feature to use because sir sir
case on and case off so as you can see our download speed was a little teensy tiny bit lower but it went ahead and traded that for our upload speed and our upload speed is gold so i'm gonna go ahead and give that a a plus right there i mean that is pretty good that is a lot of money invested in that 5g right there to give me that amazing speed now there are some pros and cons of 5g ultra wideband for example i did explain about the car window uh, second of all your carrier will absolutely hate you after you start to use about 198 gigabytes a day um but um some of the good things is that you get a really 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 fast speed and uh, I think that is the sole good thing here. Uh, I, I bought two months of this Verizon plan just so I could test this out. I'm on the prepaid, uh, I forget what it's called. It's the most expensive one coming in at $81.15 a month. I did pay for the one month and then I found out I was going to uh, Delaware. So I went ahead and paid for that second month so that I could experience these speeds myself. Now, their Wi-Fi here is pretty slow. It's about five megabits compared to my data, which is about 2,161. So, uh, you know, big difference. And plus, it's a lot safer to use your own rather than using some random places Wi-Fi that you've never been to and that you don't know the people, you know. So, um, anyways, overall, 5G Ultra Wideband is just, it, it's awesome. It has such good potential, but it has problems and it has a lot of them that need to be fixed before this can be a nationwide thing that everyone uses because it's just it's the reliability and the coverage that's the issue it's very it's a very very small amount and um for example if i go to the coverage map okay i have the coverage map right here but i uh, actually wanted to show you guys how quick this loads so uh, it loads very very quick um Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, Dewey Beach. And as you can see, Delaware, um, Dewey Beach is covered, but this is about the only place that's gonna be covered. Yep, yep, highway's covered, but look at this. There's no coverage anywhere for any of this. The coverage should be uh, brown, and that those are not brown, that's just the store. Looks like a brown highlighter, to be honest. So you have to look for these little circles. That is the ultra wideband enabled cities, and you can see in the world there's just not that many of them. I mean, look at look at like these poor places. Like they just don't get any. Like Wyoming just doesn't get any.